think most of you can uh, attest, has been relatively modest at best. Now, to put a little emphasis on this, if you look at ethane or ethylene prices, ethylene prices in early April, now this is spot ethylene prices, reached a peak of 74 cents per pound. Contrast that with the average ethylene price, spot ethylene again, in December, which was about 35.3 cents a pound. So prices for ethylene on a spot basis have more than doubled since December. Now, if you think about the fact that ethane, which is the primary feedstock utilized to produce ethylene in the U.S., averaged <coughs> about 72 cents per pound in December, back when ethylene was at 35 cents, and you look at where it is today, last week ethane was less than 50 cents a gallon. So costs have declined that much. As a result, at CMAI, when we look at uh, ethylene production costs, we look at what we call the weighted average production cost of producing ethylene in the U.S. markets. The weighted average uh, <coughs> production cost for ethylene declined in December from about 35 cents a pound down to last week, it was down to 22.8 cents. That's, that's across all feedstocks. Now, if you remember that ethane, again, is the primary feedstock to produce ethylene, and it's somewhere up in in the 65 to 70 percent range in terms of total uh, 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 allocation of feedstock to, to make ethylene. <coughs> if, if you look at that situation, that, that cash cost has come down to 22.8 cents per pound. So a tremendous decrease. If you look at what's happened on the contract price for ethylene, in the first quarter, of this year, contract prices for ethylene have gone up 12 and a half cents a pound. Since October of last year, contract prices for ethylene are up 18 and a quarter cents per pound. That results in about nine cents a pound on the cost of producing PVC. Now, with these high ethylene prices, spot ethylene in particular, what it's done to the producers is it's made any derivative of ethylene, including PVC, uh, non-competitive in the export market if you're relying on spot ethylene to produce that material. Now there are some producers that are affected more by more from, by spot ethylene uh, than others. Some are, are completely integrated and have been less affected by these outages. But if you're relying on spot ethylene to participate in the export market, which has been a significant part of the producer's uh, 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 sales portfolio here in the last year or so, you've really been priced out of the market last uh, several months. All right, continuing on with uh, the ethylene status, many people thought that by the time we hit April 1st, we would start to see a change in ethylene prices and spot ethylene prices would start to come down, that we would start to see some of these plants that had been shut down from the freeze, etc., come back up online and ethylene prices would begin reacting. That has actually not been the case. They've been trending up since the beginning of April. To give you an example, in the second week of April, the spot average range for ethylene prices was actually about five and three quarter cents per pound higher than it was during the first week of April. So in other words, the market is getting increasingly bullish from, in terms of near-term ethylene prices. And when you look out to May, if you're trying to buy ethylene now for May, uh, the price during the second week of April was actually about six and a half cents, 6.4 cents higher in the second week of April for May delivery than it was in the first, first week. So the market has not weakened or, 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 or gotten softer in anticipation of this new, or this capacity coming back online. It's done just the opposite. So what has this done for, for producers on a cash margin uh, standpoint? Bottom line is, Margins are through the roof for producers making spot ethylene sales. We've got weighted average cash margins for spot ethylene at almost 50 cents a pound, 48%, 48 cents per pound. That's actually higher than post-hurricane margins. So, so the producers are, are making more money than they did when 50 to 60% of all of the ethylene production capacity on the Gulf Coast was offline following the last hurricanes that we've had. So you can imagine with ethylene prices this high, particularly spot ethylene prices, that there's been a recent significant decline in the amount of ethylene that's being sold. 
but it's just not the high prices that are keeping ethylene tight right now. There's two or three other factors that are, that are somewhat important as well, including polymer producers, and this is not just PVC, uh, this is polyethylene as well. They're rebuilding inventories that have really been diminished over the last few months. They want to rebuild these inventories while ethylene costs are, lo are low. Now we said ethylene prices are quite high, but remember I said the cash cost to produce ethylene is quite low right now. Again, if you're using ethylene <coughs> as a meat stock, the cost last week to make ethylene with ethane was just over 20 cents per pound. So the producers want to rebuild their inventories while the cash cost for eth ethylene is quite low. So there's less available for the spot market because they're using it internally. Also, a lot of the producers that have been down have got to uh, repay their exchange partners. Typically, when a producer goes down for a period of time, he tries to cover a percentage of the outages of that production that's lost through trades and swaps with other producers. So when they come back up, they have to repay that volume. And it's this, this balancing of the books typically takes as much as one to three months. So all of that will help keep ethylene tight here for the near term. And another issue that's occurring here, and probably don't have the time to get into this in too much depth right now, but because of the economics associated with, uh, with crude oil and natural gas and the, the various uh, uh, costs of producing ethylene with uh, the different feedstocks that are available, uh, ethane and, uh, and a lot of the LNGs are si significantly advantaged versus the heavier feedstocks. So what's happened is a lot of the producers have invested a lot of money to shift their technology over from the heavier crackers, uh, cracking the naphtha again from crude oil, to the lighter feedstocks uh, such as ethane. Now when they've done that, they've lost some production capacity in the process. Our analysis says that three to five percent of the nameplate capacity in the U.S. has been lost as a result of this shift over from the heavier feedstock to the lighter feedstock, all of which is, is reducing the available ethylene supply. So this chart is really intended to show you just how much ethylene capacity has been lost recently. And this is, this is production loss on a monthly basis going back to January of 2009. Now what I want you to focus on on this particular chart is the period represented inside this dotted yellow line. That's where we really uh, started to feel the run of this at the end of last year and really going through May. Now what you'll notice is that we have gone through periods, particularly at the beginning of last year, where we've lost more capacity than on a, on a percentage basis or in terms of pounds than we're losing today. The difference is that we went, when we went into this period, inventories had already been brought down to very, very low levels. Producers consciously dropped inventories at the end of last year uh, to low levels as they typically do to clear out inventories at the end of, a, uh, of the calendar year. What they weren't expecting was these unanticipated outages that occurred as a result of the, uh, the freezes that we had at the, uh, at the beginning of the year. So as a result, ethylene inventories plummeted. If you look at this chart here, you can see that this represents ethylene inventories on a quarterly basis going back to 1995. If you look at the first sort of pink bar there, that represents where we were at the end of last year. Uh, that's the lowest point that we've been at in years. Again, a lot of that was done by design. Now, again, we hit those freezes in the first part of this year, and you took an already low inventory situation and exacerbated it uh, uh, tremendously, and the point is, now this is an estimate now for the first quarter of 2010 because we don't have the final results in it, but we think that inventories for ethylene are going to be at a, at, at a record low level. Our people tell us, our Olkins guys say that ethylene inventories are probably going to be no greater than six days of supply when we get the uh, final numbers in. Now of this six days of supply, a significant portion of that is actually considered non-recoverable. So the, in, the industry is really operating on razor-thin ethylene inventories right now. Now, if you look at the forecast there, the gold bar, you can see that uh, we do expect that situation to improve relatively quickly when some of this new capacity or some of this capacity comes back online here uh, in the next couple of months. PVC inventories have sort of followed the same pattern here as ethylene.